Lesson 9.3b, finding the area of a composite figure. As we discussed in the last video, a composite figure is made up of simple geometric shapes. To find the area of a composite figure or other irregular shaped figure, we separate it into simple non-overlapping figures. The fewer the better. We find the area of each simpler figure, then add the areas together to get a total area of the composite figure. We'll need to use several different area formulas for each composite figure. So here we have our shapes. Here we have the area formula for that shape. We have our triangle, which we discussed in the last video, that area is equal to half times the base times the height. Or we could say that it's equal to the base times the height divided by 2. That would be half of it. A square is the side times the side. It's side squared. Because a square has four sides that are all the same length, we just do side times side. For the rectangle, we do the length times the width. For a parallelogram, we do the base times the height. And for a trapezoid, we do half the height and multiply it to the sum of base 1 plus base 2. So that would be the first base added to the second base. Then we would multiply it by half the height. So we're going to quickly go through these formulas before we actually do some composite areas. Here we have a triangle. We can see that the base is a 10 units and the height is 4.5 units. We do half the base times the height, or my favorite, we do the base times the height, the 10 times the 4.5, and just divide it by 2. We get 45 divided by 2, or 22 and 5 tenths units square. Here we have a square, and all the sides are a 5, so we're going to do 5 times 5. It has 25 units square. Here we have a rectangle, and we do our length times our width, 6 times 2, that's 12 units square. And remember, the height of a figure is perpendicular to its base. So this height is perpendicular to the space. It makes a right angle, a 90 degree angle. For our parallelogram, we have a base of 9 and a height of 4. We can see that it's perpendicular to the top up here. It's making a right angle. We do area is equal to 9 times 4. It's 36 units square. For our trapezoid, we have base 1 is a 4 and base 2 is an 8 and a height of 5. We're going to add the 4 plus 8 as 12. Then we're going to multiply it by half of 5. Well, half of 5 is 2 and 5 tenths. We can multiply that times 12 and get 30 units square. And the height will always form a right angle with the base. See here? The height can be inside or outside of a figure. So we might see a parallelogram and the height is on the outside like this with dotted lines. Or for a trapezoid, we might see the height on the outside. It could be inside or outside of the figure. When two or more lengths are congruent, we use tick marks. They tell us which lengths are congruent. We have two tick marks here and two tick marks here that tells us the length of this side is the same as the length of this side. They're the same length. And this side and this side are congruent. They're the same length. Because this one has three and this one has three. We might even see one tick mark and one tick mark. Here it's telling us to find the area of the figure. We have a parallelogram. And we have a trapezoid. Kind of looks like it's upside down from what you're normally used to seeing for a trapezoid because the wider base is up here and here's the narrower base. And the parallelogram has two inches for its height and a base of eight inches. We do base times height, that's eight times two, that's 16 inches square. Now the trapezoid has a height of 2.5 inches and base one is congruent to the base of the parallelogram, so we know that this is also 8 inches. Base 2 is 4 inches. 
we do half of 2.5 times 8 plus 4. 8 plus 4 is 12. Half of 2.5 is 1.25. And we multiply them and get 15 inches square. Now we just add them for a total area. We add the area of the parallelogram plus the area of the trapezoid, and we get 31 inches square. Now, do you notice something about this diagram? Look at this. There's a 4 here, and there's a 3 here. We didn't even use those, did we? Beware of unnecessary information in a diagram or figure. Look at the composite figure carefully to find the least number of geometric figures. We could find the total area as two figures, this parallelogram and this trapezoid, or as six figures. We could do a triangle, a triangle, and a rectangle, and a triangle, a triangle, and a rectangle. Would you want to use a formula six times, or would you rather use it two times? So look at it carefully and find the least number of geometric figures. And remember to ignore unnecessary information that we're not even going to use. Remember to use the order of operations when using the formula for the area of a trapezoid. Here we have a trapezoid and base 1 is 10 centimeters, base 2 is 20 centimeters, and the height is 6 centimeters. And it's perpendicular to the space, isn't it? We have our formula for the area of a trapezoid, half times the height, times base 1 plus base 2, so we're going to do 10 plus 20. We're going to do this first and get 30. Then we can do half times 6, which is 3, and multiply that times 30 to get 90 centimeters squared. But we can multiply in any order, so we could do, instead of doing half times 6, we could do 6 times 30 and get 180, and multiply that by half. We still get 90 centimeters squared, but remember, we need to do within the parentheses first, then we can multiply in any order. We've got this composite figure, and it's telling us to find the area of the figure and to use 3.14 for pi. Well, we can see that we can split it into a square and a semicircle. We don't have a formula for a semicircle, so we can use the formula for a circle and divide it by 2 to get half a circle. We see that this side of the square is 6 centimeters. Well, a square has four sides that are the same length. That means this side's 6, this side's 6, this side's 6. We do 6 times 6, which is 36, and we get 36 centimeters square. Now, for the semicircle. Well, our formula says that the area is equal to pi times the radius squared divided by 2 to get the semicircle. What's the radius? We only have one measure down here. But if you keep in mind that a square has the same length for each side, that means that this is also 6 centimeters from this point to this point, which means the radius, if this were a diameter of the circle from edge to edge, the radius would be half of that. It would be half of 6. It would be 3. So even though this drawing started off with just the 6 centimeters down here, we can find the radius of it. So we have approximately 3.14 times 3 to the second power divided by 2. We've got approximately 3.14 times 9. 3 times 3 is 9. We're going to divide that by 2. 3.14 times 9 is 28 and 26 hundredths. We divide that by 2 and get 14 and 13 hundredths. So remember, because we're not using pi, which represents all the digits of pi, we're using an approximation of 3.14. We have to remember to use an approximation symbol. So this area for the semicircle is approximately 14 and 13 hundredths centimeters squared. Now we add the square area, 36 centimeters, and the semicircle, and we get 50 and 13 hundredths centimeters square total. We're finished with part two. We're going to move on to the last part of 9.3, using area to solve problems for composite figures. 
So remember to look at the diagrams and to be careful of unnecessary information, but then remember to look for information that might be helpful, like this six centimeters on the square would help us find the radius for the semicircle. Have a great day and join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye.